When the time does come for 63601 to steam again, a return will be greatly received. We must remember though that there are, if you'll forgive the expression, a large number of small tank engines in preservation too. This group are often referred to as industrials and are commonly overlooked. This is quite wrong in my view, as not only were these engines essential to British industries, but in some cases they are integral to the story of early railway construction. This particular engine has had quite a colourful career, though through no fault of its own, has spent most of it waiting for something to happen. It even has a great deal in common with both 63601 and by extension 7903. It began life shunting wagon loads of aircraft guns during World War II and ended up in the ownership of the beloved steam-powered cleric, Edwin Boston. The locomotive in question, Peckett 040 Saddle Tank, number 2012, Teddy. When mainline steam traction finally came to an end on BR Metals in August 1968, there were three ways in which enthusiasts were able to continue the experience of the old days. You could travel on a flying Scotsman rail tour, spend a day on the Vale of Rydal Railway, or, if you had special permission, capture industrial engines at work at coal mines and steelworks. Nothing said the old days of steam quite like the latter, as when looking at the range of industrial steam engines in action in the late 1960s and early 70s, the overall majority were 70 years old as a bare minimum. In an era where modernization seemed the way to go, these little shunters served as a reassuring reminder from the past. There were several major players in terms of building industrials in the 19th century, including Bagnall, Andrew Barclay, Manning Wardle and Peckett. The latter is of interest to us today. Beginning life as Fox Walker and Company in 1864, the Bristol-based firm was bought out by Thomas Peckett in 1880. Now rebranded as Peckett and Sons, the company provided a steady flow of both large and small steam engines for the next 60 years. However, business began to slow in the early 1950s. The final engine, number 2165, was completed in 1958, and by 1963 the Peckett story had ended. That's not quite true. No more engines were to be built, but the Peckett legacy has continued. Appropriately enough, one of the largest surviving Peckets, an 060S9 number 1940 Henbury, now resides at the Bristol Harbour Railway. The BHR has also played host to one of the smallest surviving Peckets, Teddy. When Teddy was built in 1941, originally it had no name. It was one of six ordered by the Ministry of Supply to work in its Royal Ordnance Factories and had a total weight of 11 tonnes. Unsurprisingly, when she arrived at the depot in Creekmore, the staff were alleged to have commented, My God, it's tiny! Size proved irrelevant as 2012's pulling power impressed even the most pessimistic of the workers. She was transferred to Cardiff in 1944, where she would run up to the exchange yard at Birch Grove. Even when the Second World War ended in 1945, 2012 had quite a workload, but that quickly diminished as the years progressed. Sitting dormant for some time in the mid-50s, the decision was finally made to sell the little engine. 1959 would see it leave the Cardiff depot and be transported to the West Ewell yard of J.W. Hardwick and Sons. Another eight years passed, and by now 2012 was looking in a sorry state. Fortunately, a man by the name of Bill Lee stepped in and purchased it. He then had it stored away in a garage, at the expense of its cab having to be cut down. Finally, in 1972, 
2012's patience was rewarded. She was bought by renowned steam enthusiast and cleric Edwin Boston and was taken to the Market Bosworth Light Railway for restoration. It was here that the engine finally received a suitable name, Herbert. Despite overwhelming enthusiasm from volunteers, Herbert wasn't really of much use to them and so Boston had the engine moved again, this time to the Cadeby Light Railway. This was Boston's own creation and consisted of 97 yards of two foot gauge track and its own little engine, an 040 Bagnell saddle tank of 1919 called Pixie. Boston never invested in any considerable length of standard gauge track and so Herbert stood on static display outside the rectory for the remainder of the 20th century. Edwin Boston was a dear friend of the Reverend Wilbert Audrey and the two of them could be frequently seen together at both the CLR and at various industrial locations. Engine crews treated them with deep respect and would often clean the locomotives especially. Unfortunately, Boston passed away in 1986 at the age of 62, but Audrey, his widow, could see what the KB Railway meant to both the general public and to Edwin, and so, with Audrey's help, she kept the site open until 2005. Despite sitting outside in the elements for 20 years, Herbert was in remarkably good external condition when it was craned onto a lorry in April 2006. What strikes me as interesting about the Cadeby story is that Audrey never made either Teddy or Pixie into a railway series character. Having said that, Boston's traction engine and steamroller are said to be the real Trevor and George. The Peckett's new home was the Lavender Line in East Sussex, where it was completely restored. Not only was the Peckett given a new lease of life, but also a new name. Edwin Boston was known to all as Teddy, and so in a fitting tribute, the volunteers had a new nameplate cast and fitted. Though popular on the Lavender, Teddy changed hands yet again in 2011, this time to the Chasewater Railway. This two mile long line proved to be an ideal home for the Peckett and was in good company as the Chasewater has a fine collection of Bagnell, Hudswell Clark and Hunslet locomotives. Whilst here, Teddy proved to be something of a mascot for the CR, spending time away at Shildon, the NRM and also the Great Central Railway. Teddy also went off on holiday to the Mid Hants Railway to pose as the Northwestern Railway's number six, Percy, albeit with a slightly oversized face. Teddy has never been one for settling down. 2017 saw the engine withdrawn for a second overhaul and three years later it was put up for sale with a price tag of £45,000. Finally, in June last year, Teddy was transported to the Battlefield Line and is now awaiting restoration. What I like most about Teddy is that it has had an extremely active, but also an extremely static life. It has always been a crowd puller wherever it goes and just goes to prove that good things always come to those who wait. And so, from Munitions to Mount Sorrel, from Cadeby to Bristol, Teddy, this is your life. <laughs>